Asian markets are all sliding as investors digest a slew of macroeconomic data from across the region. South Korea's overall inflation rate in November fell to 3.3% compared with the 3.7% that was expected. The inflation rate for Japan's capital, Tokyo, came in at 2.6% down from the 3.3% in October, with Tokyo inflation often being considered a leading indicator of national trends in the country. On a positive note, Kai Shin released China's Service Purchasing Managers Index today, which hit a three-month high. But despite this, stocks in the region are plummeting. Let's get more on this now with Tim Waterer in Sydney, his chief market analyst at KCM Trade. Thank you for being with us today. Right, Tim, is there any data release in particular that triggered this sell-off we are seeing today? Or is this talking more about an overall assessment of the region? Nice to be with you. You look at the data releases today, generally they're pretty positive. Inflation coming down in South Korea and Tokyo, uh, the RBA holding rates in Australia, uh, and also the Chinese figures we saw were actually pretty good. So I think it wasn't so much uh, the data we saw today. But I think it was just a follow on from what we saw in the US. Wall Street took a step back and that set the tone for Asian markets today. I think the reason for that is there's a, traders are having some pause after what was quite a pretty good month in November with the Nasdaq up 11%. So I think it's just a bit of a natural pullback we're seeing. Also in light of, I guess, some important data we have. A lot of the reason stocks have been moving up has been on growing expectations that we'll see the Federal Reserve cut rates next year. So if the data later this week in the form of non-farm payrolls in the US supports that scenario, we'll see a continuation of the rally. Uh, vice versa, you know, if the, the numbers come in pretty high on the employment front, that could raise some questions about when the Fed could actually start cutting rates. So quite a bit riding on that employment data later this week in the US. Right. Core inflation is slowing down in, in Tokyo. What do, does it mean for the BOJ and its monetary policy normalisation at this point? Yeah, I think the BOJ will be pretty happy to see uh, what, the, the, what the numbers say. I think what it does do, seeing that inflation slow, is it reduces the sense of urgency and to, to um, start tightening their monetary policy. So, so I think this means that they can now uh, stick to, the, I think, the schedule they had in mind, which is, which is most possibly looking at, say, the end of Q1 or Q2 in 2000, 2024, when they might start, you know, initiating some greater changes in terms of that yield curve control. I think the remaining concern for, for the, uh, the BOJ is that week again. Uh, what, what that week again means is that Japan is still importing inflation. Uh, uh, when they're buying raw materials from offshore. So it remains an area of concern. Um, albeit that the yen has strengthened uh, from when it was sort of the dollar yen rate was above 150, it's sort of come back to 146, 147 now. That's still, that's still a concern. I think the other thing the BOJ will want to see is uh, maybe some stronger GDP numbers before they feel, they feel confident to start uh, you know, moving away from that ultra loose policy that we've seen for a number of years now. Grit analysis, Tim Waterer there for us, a KCM Trade Chief Market Analyst. Thank you. And now let's go to other top business stories from around the world. Facebook owner Meta is facing a major legal challenge in Spain over its practices in the advertising market. A group representing 83 Spanish media outlets has filed a $600 million lawsuit against the social media giant, accusing it of violating European Union rules by collecting users' data for advertising and profiling without their consent. The lawsuit argues 100% of Meta's regional revenue was unlawfully obtained. AT&T has signed a deal with Ericsson to modernize its U.S. wireless network, making the Swedish company its primary 5G equipment supplier. The U.S. telecom giant says the value of the new agreement could reach up to $14 billion over five years. The deal is a major blow to Nokia, which is currently responsible for about a third of AT&T's U.S. network. And major Swiss bank, Bank Pictet, has admitted to conspiring with U.S. taxpayers to hide over $5.6 billion from the Internal Revenue Service. The private bank will pay almost $122.9 million in penalties as part of a deal with prosecutors to dismiss charges of criminal conspiracy to defraud. As part of the deal, the bank will also cooperate with ongoing investigations into hidden bank accounts.